But old chaps, I'm just here to present talent, so to speak. Uh, this latest video, if it all goes to plan, will be a sprint into Waterloo, south of the River Thames. Your first crossing off the River Thames on the tour, usually. Um, I'm gonna, it's gonna, I'm gonna use an audio commentary, so to speak, because I'm not having much luck with um, trying to put the photos either side, because I'm not sure if anyone sticks to the end, uh, so to speak. And then, um, that'll be it. It won't be as long as the Battle of Berlin video. And uh, as far as that goes, I think this year uh, we'll do ones, maybe long ones, depends on what people are doing, so to speak, in uh, the 80th anniversary of Dunkirk, the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain, which is my big interest historically, and the great shame is I'm not be going to be able to go over to, say, RAF Hendon or wherever for the Battle of Britain. Um, so there's all of that, and I'll see what I can do else for London, and um, yeah, let us know. <laughs> I used to be a tour guide in a past life. Well then champs, as I say, we're now south of the Thames, and uh, in the old days until fairly recently uh, in London's history, Going south of the river was not always recommended, although you always came south of the river until about the 18th century, for, uh, chiefly for your entertainment. And uh, the area we're now going to go on through, away from St Thomas's and County Hall, uh, will get us through Waterloo, up to Waterloo Bridge, and we'll be at Coffin Garden soon after that, if you're on after stop number 13. So, try and remain seated. Otherwise, uh, you might end up in St Thomas's or A.T. White there, and no one should end their trip in London that way. County Hall, on your left as we press off, it was built between 1919 and 1922 as the home of the London government that persisted in the building until 1986. And as you see, it's a tremendous hulking great building that nowadays is home to various uh, hotels, restaurants, cafes, uh, the Aquarian, Shrek's Elder Adventure and even the London Eye, I suppose. Technically, London government, as you'll see if you're staying on to the tower, is now by... City uh, now by Tower Bridge in City Hall, still south of the river. Now, south of the river used to be utterly prolific in what it had entertainment wise thousands of taverns, a fair few houses of ill repute, animal fighting pits, dog fighting, bear fighting chiefly, and of course, theatres the likes of your globe, the crown, the curtain, and others. But since the early 19th century, this part of town, as indeed true of London, is given over to the train. Were it not for the railways in early 19th century London, around about the 1820s, for the next 30, 40 years, London would not be the size it is. The population of the capital grew effectively a couple of million people by the end of the expansion. Uh, neighbourhoods were destroyed and uh, recreated by the railways. I mean, they were not opposed, these companies, and they were competing companies in destroying terrace houses or whatever to put their tracks through. Places like Wimbledon, in the suburbs as they are now, they have blossomed into size as well. People needed somewhere to live. Uh, there were already people living there, but particularly true of northwest London and what is still known as Metro Land, largely built up for the workers working on what is now the Metropolitan Line of the London Underground. The train was seen in some respects as a necessary evil, I suppose. Charles Dickens initially was not too mad about it. He said it was like some kind of prehistoric beast gobbling all in its path, and ironically, perhaps, to a couple of years before he died, he was involved in a train crash at Staplehurst in Kent, uh, travelling with his mistress and her mother, and it effectively uh, altered his life forever. It, one contribution to his death a few years later. Nowadays, as you're going to see as we come around County Hall, uh, you can't quite get away from the train for trying, and what you see between buildings onto your right, and as you'll come round the Park Plaza, is of course Waterloo Station, which on that map I've put up, uh, that you're hopefully looking at, or have looked at, is utterly colossal nowadays. But York Road, and what we're now going to travel down 
all the way to the end uh, at the IMAX is fairly typical for this part of town in how it's changed. When you get to the end of County Hall, the street beyond was irreparably changed from the last night of the Blitz on 11th of May 1941. The last gasp really of uh, Hitler to knock out or at least cause as much mischief, uh, random targets and um, then he was off to Russia in June. However, if he had known what the authorities had said, he might have come back. The authorities said after the 11th of uh, in the days after 11th of May, that if London suffered at least one more raid of this size, it would have been crippled. Communication cables were cut, the underground had been affected in places, railways were, rail lines were destroyed or damaged, and the streets were out of mess. Water supply was problematic. Incredibly, they were on their knees, and so the great morale of the British public was also creaking as well. So as you see, you get to the end of County Hall, you can see up now through to your left up to the London Line, that's as close as you get to it. We'll press on through our next stop. Waterloo was opened in 1848, in the early years of the Great Victorian era, and as is typical of everything in Victorian London and beyond, it was big, grandiose and incredible to look at. Nowadays, Waterloo sees on average something like 99 million people a year, and I'd imagine, sadly, this year will make it different. But Waterloo is a gateway to a world beyond, and it's a place I hold quite dear, curiously enough, in my affections. Four, you can get, say, to Raymouth and its golden sandy beaches in Dorset. You can go down an hour and a half to Portsmouth and see Nelson's flagship, HMS Fitchery, in the home of the Royal Navy for these past 535 years. Or you can go to Wimbledon, the home of lawn tennis. The grounds are usually open every day of the year, but for the championships, which sadly are cancelled this year for the first time since 1940. And indeed, all manner of places throughout the suburbs, into Surrey, all through Hampshire, Dorset, and even out to Devon, if you have the legs for it over to the Isle of Wight from Portsmouth. Waterloo is much changed inside compared to pre-war and post-war. You no longer, for instance, can uh, drive right into the middle of it from outside. The Necropolis Railway no longer leaves from Waterloo uh, through the concourse. Uh, that all stopped many, many decades ago. The platform, there's more platforms. There's 25 now that they've uh, converted the Eurostar platforms into regular passenger services. And if you want Eurostar nowadays, you have to go to King's Cross St Pancras International, which is near Harry Potter's Platform 9 and Free Cause. Waterloo for me has been an ever present part of my life. When I was little, you're blinking and trying to wake up still at about half six in the morning, having been walked to the train station in the hour street about five o'clock uh, four thirty to five o'clock uh, and on your way out joining some of the early commuters and you get to waterloo the concourse is quiet and mostly empty and then you're going down the Raymond for portsmouth in my uh, adulthood it's wimbledon on still portsmouth and sometimes Weymouth or richmond if the mood takes me Waterloo's incredible to sample at most times of the day. It's busiest periods of the morning and the evening. And uh, you stand to one side, say, at rush hour in the evening, and it feels like half of humanity are barreling past you. The concourse is always shiny. There's coffee shops now, various little things like M&S boots and baguette places and whatever. Four underground lines and uh, technically the river boat is at Waterloo, but obviously a little railway. And uh, if you're not going to Waterloo Station, you can come out of that great main entrance. And South Bank Centre now has all manner of things to do. Indeed, that main entrance was uh, cra recrafted in 19 by 1922 and is known as the Fitchery Arch. Just inside it, it bears the names of all those that lost their lives from Waterloo Station, the, worker, the rail workers, and it now honours the memory of those from the Second War. Not, no one comes to London to look at Waterloo, but if you're wanting to go beyond, it's a good little, uh, good way of doing so. And the underground gets you all over the place. The Jubilee Line gets you out past the East End or up to the north of, uh, the, well, beyond the capital into uh, Middlesex. Waterloo and City Line is a nice quick way of getting into the city and the finance. Bakerloo Line does the same job really as the Jubilee, albeit it stops two stops past 
south of Waterloo at Elephant and Castle. And you have all manner of other destinations on the northern line as well. Sadly, you have to leave Waterloo. Away from a rechange, a much changed south of the river, up onto Waterloo Bridge, which is of course still known as the Ladies Bridge, completed by a female workforce in 1944. And in its 75 years of history, never once closed for major repairs, and it cleans itself in the wet weather. That was Waterloo.